I want to tell you a story real quick. And it's something that I don't really share. I don't, I, again, I'm not, it's not something that I hide, but I don't share it so often. And I'll explain why I'm telling you that, why I'm telling you afterwards. Um, so I was diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was 12 years old. Okay. I was, um, I was going, to, I was at a summer camp and I was coming back home with these headaches, really bad headaches every single day. And I didn't realize why. And my mom just thought it was, you know, it was in the heat, headaches, all that kind of stuff. Really what was happening is I became friends with the, um, the kid whose mom stocked the vending machines at the, at the camp. So every day, I'm not kidding, every single day, two of those like 17 ounce bottles of spray, two of them, like one for lunch and one like right before I left, two of them. Every, I'm not kidding, every single day for like two and a half months. And again, that now it explains where the headaches were coming. So after that, you know, got diagnosed, got explained all the ins and outs of what type one diabetes meant. And I thought I had a decent grasp of it. My grandfather was a type two diabetic. So it was in our family. Um, there was one night, and actually going from summer camp, I was, a, I was a counselor at a camp, and there was one night where I ate really late. I ate super late at night, and I took, I took insulin, and I thought it was the right amount. Obviously, with, with type 1 diabetes, it's a balancing game. So you go between high blood sugar, low blood sugar, and that Goldilocks zone where too much insulin, it goes low, too little, and it goes high. And so I took too much. And while I was sleeping that night, my sugar dipped so low that I went into a coma while I was sleeping. And so when it came to wake me up the next morning, I was unresponsive and, and I was late. And that's how my mom knew to come in and try and wake me up and shaking me. I wasn't waking up. And so then it became, it was, it obviously turned into panic. I didn't know all of this because I was, it was, to me, I was sleeping, but you know, it was using glucagon, using straight glucose into my body, kind of like an EpiPen. Uh, my little sister who was five, she was the one that actually called 911 and said, my brother has diabetes and he doesn't feel good. So that got the EMTs to come here and, and they brought me back. They brought me back. Um, and so that whole story, and I remember, I remember waking up in my bed, A, wondering why there were all these strange men in my room, okay, just sitting around me. It was, it was very odd to me. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. And I was hooked up to an IV. And they said, we're going to put this, um, this glucose into your bloodstream, and you're going to be fine right after that. And I thought to myself, okay, here goes nothing. And literally, the second they pushed that syringe in, I felt like I could breathe again. I felt like I breathed. I could talk. It was a bad headache again after that, but I was fine. I was totally fine. That was like a huge wake-up call for me that, and this is the reason why I'm telling you this story, that things can change in the blink of an eye, okay? Things can change very, very quickly. And for me, it was a matter of staying organized and knowing all the ins and outs and the repercussions for if every action that I did had a reaction on the other side. And again, that, that reaction can be small, or as I just told you, it can be very, very large. So for me, for me, as I go through my daily life, it's a constant balance of action and reaction, action and reaction. Mine's a little bit different than yours, but it's the same way. It's the same thing. Everything we do has a reaction on the other side. Everything we do sets a ripple effect and, and we take those ripples, good or bad, all right, as they come our way. So as we go into day 50, as we round out a 10 week challenge, okay? Use my story as an example. I'm sure you guys have stories, of, not that kind of story, but a story of your own where again, one action has a reaction, okay? And, a, and a, I'll say a consequence, but that, I use that term good or bad, okay? It's all about staying organized, making decisions now that when we get those ripple effects on the other side, when we flip the coin and we see what, what's on the other side for us, it's always something good. It's always something good. So the choices you make here now are going to affect you a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now. Put in the work now. Again, it's investing the time today to enjoy every single tomorrow that you have to the fullest. And you got a lot of tomorrows coming your way. The way that you're pushing yourselves, keep strengthening your body, okay? Keep challenging yourselves, keep getting stronger. And as we round out this 10 weeks, Okay, as we reach a huge milestone, immediately I want you to be setting another one. Okay, set another milestone, find another mountain, and let's climb that one too. Okay, because you can, because I've watched you get stronger and stronger, and I know it's out there for you, and I know we're gonna do it together. Okay, thank you guys for listening to me. I, I truly appreciate these last 49 days, it's been nothing but pleasure for me. Okay, I want you to bring it in real quick. We're gonna say take it to the max for the 49th, how cool is that? 49th time. All right. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some kickboxing. Okay. We're going to close it out as strong as we possibly can. We're going to nice and close. We're going to say, take the max on three, nice and loud. Thank you guys. I got the pause. Thank you, Robin. All right. Take the max on three, nice and loud. There you go. One, two, three. Take it to the max. <laughs>